Well, uh, you know, I, I kind of wrote out like kind of a formal speech, and I know we're kind of a small crowd, so I'll try to keep this a little uh, a little more informal, but I will kind of work off my script here. But um, I want to say uh, hello, everyone, and I've been asked to offer the introductory remarks for this, the 25th anniversary of the Band Book Celebration here at the show. Um, thank you, Eleanor, and to me, I think that's worthy of a round of applause. Um, for those of you who don't know, which I guess you all do now since uh, Paula just introduced me, uh, I am the chair of the Department of Communication. I teach over there, uh, and I also have the good fortune to call the organizer of this event, Paulette, both a colleague and a friend. Uh, I'm in my fourth year here at the University of Toledo, and when I arrived on campus, um, you know, fresh, I didn't know much, you know, came in eyes wide. Um, uh, this was one of the first events that really got put on my radar. And that happened both the kind of the timing of the event being, um, oh, I think our food's here, um, being held at the beginning of the year, and also the fact that my office is very close to Paulette. Um, and so while I didn't miss the first 21 years of Van Book celebration, I quickly came to realize kind of what a staple this event was to the department, the university, and the community. Uh, I came to realize that it's an event, a ritual, a celebration, and much of that is due to Paulette and the rest of you all who help out and serve on the council. Given that Paulette's office is so close to mine, I kind of get uh, kind of peek uh, behind the scenes at some of the work that goes into the run up of this day. Um, in, uh, in the upcoming weeks before today, Paulette is frantically recruiting, networking with area organizations, securing books, soliciting donations, sorting out logistics, promoting, scheduling, planning. Yesterday she was busy finding jokes um, and above all embodying the ethos of banned books, even down to her clothing. Uh, we can all tell when banned books is near because of the t-shirts and the buttons that Paulette uh, wears. And so I tried to take an inventory of all the things that she's doing. Did I miss anything? It's, it's, uh, we work the whole year in the committee. My coalition, Arjun Saverhall, Timothy Shinibasa, Laura Mitchell, Derek Beaumont, and Josie Schreiber. I couldn't do anything if I didn't have my coalition. And you know what? If I didn't have all the partners around campus, like student government and CAP and the provost office, if I didn't have all of you guys, I would not, we would not, this isn't an I either, this is we, we would not be able to do this. And my good colleague, I see two of them, Jody Jamison and Barbara Mann are here, big supporters over the years. And, and I have a student at the desk, Emily Schnipke, it's amazing. People step up and help, and if they did not, we could not do um, well said, Paulette. And um, the, uh, what I was about to say is that when you hear Paulette speak about this event, she speaks about it with conviction and passion. And I think we all just heard that here too. And I mean, not just Paulette, all of you as well. Um, Paulette truly loves what this event means and that passion is contagious. And I see it kind of carried out with the rest of you all here as well. Um, I know Sumitra does a lot for this as well. And I just know that because, you know, her office is close to mine as well. But I know that others who are doing things kind of uh, outside of the proximity of my office put a lot in here as well. Met Derek yesterday, was over providing the muscle, as he was saying, <laughs> uh, moving books around. Um, and so I just, I love kind of the group kind of effort that's uh, involved in this. But beyond that kind of infectious joy that Paulette and others bring to this day, this event I think is also important because of what it symbolizes. Um, so as most of us in here probably know, right, the mayor of Toledo is named Van Books Day, which just attests to how much the community values this event. I remember encountering um, a banned book of my own out in the wild when I was in sixth grade. Um, I read the book My Girl back when I was in sixth grade. Does anyone remember that? It was turned into a movie eventually. You remember? Yeah. What's that? I've just seen the movie. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin's in it, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis. Well, it was a book before it was a movie. And I read it when I was in sixth grade and I loved uh, the book. And we were assigned uh, in my sixth grade class, I was in a very conservative Christian school, which is, um, I went through, you know, K through 12. Um, and we were supposed to talk to the class about a book that was meaningful to us. And I love this book. It talked to me about things like loyalty, gender, grief, cross-cultural friendship. 
Uh, and I went to my teacher, and we're supposed to say which book it is that we wanted to speak about, and I said that I wanted to talk about my girl. And my teacher, I remember pulling me aside and telling me that the book was, quote unquote, inappropriate. Um, and I was pretty ordinary at that age, um, kind of had a second, uh, second home set up in the principal's office. Uh, and so I, uh, you know, I like to protest things. I was always that kind of kid. Um, but uh, I genuinely didn't understand what this book would, what would be inappropriate about this book. Uh, so I protested. I know they said the word damn a couple of times. Uh, There's a lot of themes of death throughout the book. The main character's mother had died. Um, and uh, there's a pretty gruesome death of a child at the end. So maybe these are the reasons that the book uh, was deemed inappropriate. Um, but no, the further I pushed, I remember my teacher uh, in kind of hushed tones saying, uh, no, and my teacher was a woman on top of this, right? Explained to me in hushed tones that the book was inappropriate because it described the main character getting her period. So in a 180 page book, they spend about a page and a half talking about uh, character processing and natural part of growing up. Looking back, this makes me angry, but I remember in sixth grade, not feeling angry, but feeling embarrassed really that I'd even asked to do this book, right? I didn't even really know what a period was at this point. But I got the message loud and clear that some ideas were strictly off limits. Um, and so uh, that's really the first time I can remember encountering a banned book um, kind of in that capacity. But if that's not really where censorship ended in my kind of childhood. I grew up in a conservative Christian household uh, in the 80s and the 90s. My father was a minister, the height of the satanic panic. And I remember all kinds of things were banned in my house. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch or read anything that had any magic in it. Um, and so I was, uh, all my friends were able to watch all these cool cartoons like He-Man, Masters of the Universe. I wasn't allowed to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I wasn't allowed to watch Smurfs. Uh, I wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons. Like when people talk about like their childhoods growing up, there's an entire like section of it that I'm just not privy to talking about people with. And this sounds like a joke. I promise you 100% it's not. I was not allowed to watch My Little Pony because it was too satanic. Um, and so I uh, wasn't allowed to listen to any secular music. And as these things usually go, these kind of efforts to uh, control people through censorship don't always turn out pretty successfully. Um, I've turned into a non-religious person who's a lover of fantasy and sci-fi books, uh, and I love hip-hop music. And so um, I think we can see how successful these efforts actually are. So I have a soft spot in my heart as well for this event. Um, and what I find so powerful is that while my own experiences as a child predate the 25 years that Paulette's been leading kind of this charge on banned books, uh, this, uh, excuse me, this event is as relevant today as it was 25 years ago. I think it's especially prescient that the 25th anniversary of this event coincides with the recent attack on Salman Rushdie, the author of the Satanic Group. And thinking through, you know, when Paulette asked me to provide this introduction, uh, thinking about what I was going to say, I was just really struck by how many of kind of the current debates uh, in the zeitgeist today really center around the core values of this event. Issues of free speech, censorship, access, who should be allowed to say what, um, and censorship has become a point of contention regardless of where you are on the political spectrum. It seems like everyone's intersecting with these ideas in some ways. This includes debates around things like critical race theory, cancel culture, shadow banning, deplatforming, fake news, foreign information, disinformation, conspiracy theories, and probably plenty others that I'm forgetting. So this contemporary discourse about information and access to it is kind of a jumbled mess. And um, it's not my job here to try to make any sense of all of that or say something coherent about it, other than to say, you know, these issues are certainly relevant today. So I really want to laud the banned book celebration for being ahead of the curve on these type of uh, conversations. The values that this celebration is based on, things like freedom of speech, open dialogue, listening to those you disagree with, are the kind of things that are relevant today as they were uh, back when this event was started. And the application of those values is increasingly complicated in a digitized world where 82% of Americans have at least one social media account. But this event's been laying the groundwork for the kind of conversations we need to have for the last 25 years. I wanna end by saying that I'm really proud, and you know, Paulette mentioned how uh, the support that the department has offered uh, for this event. I wanna say that I'm really proud that we're tied to this event as a department. Lots of academic departments have a stake or an investment in the kind of things that are going to be talked about today. 
but communication is certainly one of them. Everything we teach over in our department intersects, um, or is connected to issues of freedom, thought, and expression, and I'm proud that we have uh, the opportunity to support the event today. So I want to thank Paulette for her leadership on this, um, and for the invitation to open uh, this ceremony up today. Um, I want to thank all of you who helped out with logistics to make this a successful event, all of those who donated to the event, um, those of you who serve on the committee, and everyone who's speaking as well today, and also those of you who are in the audience who are attending and just here to participate in the conversation. Um, I'm really excited about what we have in store today, and um, that's it.